Hi everybody and welcome to our YouTube channel. We are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. And today we are going to show you how we go from this to this. Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> she looks so good. She looks so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and today we are going to show you how we make her look. So, so it, fantastic. So fantastic, yeah. So this is going to be one of our podcasts, but it's actually also going to be a tutorial because we're going to be doing it with duplicate stitches. So if you want to see how we do the duplicate stitching, all you need to do is keep watching. We're going to disappear now. You're not going to see us anymore. We're going to move upstairs to our uh, doll house workshop and we're going to get started. Okay, so let's go. Yes. So we have now moved upstairs to the little doll uh, workshop <laughs> that we're going to be having today and we're going to be showing you how to do her face. Yes. And it's very fun. Yeah. And actually, usually at this time, uh, in the podcast, I always say, this is not a tutorial, blah, 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 because that's what we always do. But actually today, it is a tutorial because it's not a makeup tutorial, obviously. We're not going to teach you how to put makeup <laughs> on the doll. But what we are going to be showing you today is how we embroider with duplicate stitches. Yeah, we're going to put her face on. And we're doing it with duplicate stitches. Yeah, and she has her nose already done. Mm -hmm. uh, this girl has been lying around for a long time, so there's two different yellows on her t-shirts because, I don't know, the, the yellow we used in the beginning was gone. And for the eyes and the mouth, we're going to use the Merino Extra Fine 120. Yep. And for the eyelashes, we use the this one, the sock yarn. For yeah, the regular... How do you pronounce? Four-ply. Four four yeah. <laughs> or something yes. in German. So let's start with the white in her eyes. I'm, I'm going to big, give this girl a little bit bigger eyes. That will be fun, like a Japanese manga kind of character. I, I think so. We'll see what happens. So Arne will be doing the duplicate stitching that will actually make the eyes the, and the mouth. And while Arne is doing the duplicate, duplicate stitch, which he will be talking about and he will be explaining, I am going to sit here on the other side and you won't see it, but I'll be working with uh, hair and uh, I'm finishing, I'm putting a few finishing touches on the sweater that uh, she's going to be wearing. Yeah. So if you want to have a hair tutorial, just tell us because we have, a, yeah. we will show you later the yeah. fabulous hair. The fabulous hair that we're doing and how we're actually doing. So anyway, Arne, let's start talking a little bit about the duplicate stitching. Yes. So what we're doing is we do like stitches on top of the stitches in the knit so we're like copying the stitches and that's what we call duplicate stitch yeah, or covering them up so i start with the white and as i said the nose is already done so i start like three like count three stitches on top of the nose so and then i do the white and I have to jump from oh, under those three and the, the needle come up again in the fifth. This girl will have really big eyes. Yeah. She will be like the girl in the movie Big Eye. Oh, cool. You remember that movie? I do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the duplicate stitch that you were doing now is, is great for her, for the doll's face, obviously, yeah. but there's a lot of other things you can use uh, duplicate stitching for. Uh, I like it a lot because when I am knitting color work, sometimes I get distracted. I don't look at the pattern or the chart. And suddenly when I'm, you know, way past the mistake that I've made, I realize I made a mistake because I wasn't looking at the chart and I don't want to, you know, unravel everything to go back. And so sometimes the save can be a couple of duplicate stitches to correct whatever mistake you made in the chart. Yeah, just make a duplicate stitch in the same color as the pattern. And, and that will work out perfectly. It works out. Because you're not going to tell anyone anyway. It's like, oh, come and look at my sweater. I just missed a stitch. And this is a duplicate stitch. Yeah, exactly. So that's a really good thing to do. And then, of course, duplicate stitching is good for other things as well. Uh, I have to say, do you remember, Arne, about, I'd say, f six years ago, we went to Holland uh, mm, and we did a trade yeah. show in Holland. In uh, I remember the place. It was Appledorn. 
We travel all over the world, but that place really stuck in my mind because we saw the most beautiful knitted, uh, balls. knitted Christmas balls that we've ever seen in our life, ever. And uh, they were stunning and they were made by a blind lady, yeah. believe it or not. She was blind. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. How she, and she how actually, did she do it? I think someone told us that someone had actually actually made holes. They in, punched holes in the punched charts. punched the chart so she could feel where the stitches should be. Yeah, and then instead of knitting on color work, uh, she knitted the ball in a solid color. I suppose somebody must have read the pattern out loud for her Probably. so that she remembered that or, the, or she got it in braille. And then uh, when she knitted a solid uh, colored ball, kind of like what you've got there because you have a Christmas ball it's with a body on it, ball, right? Yeah. There's a body yaddy yaddy and there's a Christmas <laughs> ball on top of it. And she had that ball and that she knitted and then on top of that, because she could follow the chart with her fingers, she'd embroider with duplicate stitch on top. The, the designs that we had made in the book. And those Christmas balls were absolutely stunning. The most beautiful uh, balls that we've ever seen. Very well knitted. Was, and very ma well made. The duplicate stitches were, were incredible. incredible. So if she saw my duplicate stitch, she would be terrified because hers was perfect. Yeah. But she's blind, yeah. so she won't see. She <laughs> no, won't see them. She felt them. But she could probably feel them, and she can probably tell you how wrong they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. But anyway, yeah, those were incredibly beautiful duplicate stitches. And of course, Arne and I, we went back home to Norway, and very inspired by this, by what we saw, we went and we did a few Christmas balls that we knitted in a solid red, uh, and then we put duplicate stitches on it, on them. We and we made... knitted them with a Norwegian wool, a non-superwash yeah. wool. And, and then we felted wool. them. And we put them in the washing machine. And when they came out, they were felted and they had shrunk. Uh, but the thing is, because you have that duplicate stitch on top, um, you had a little three-dimensional effect going on there. Because also the yarn, it kind of gets a little hairy. So you had a little red Christmas ball that was a little hairy. And then on top of that, you had that white duplicate stitch for the pattern that was also a little hairy. And it gave this beautiful, beautiful um, effect. Mm. It's also so very lovely. nice, like if when you, if you felt, if you felt that something that is knitted with color work, it, the color work disappear more. Yeah. It, it's like, it's more, I would say it, it's, you get the same tension, kind of. It looks the same when it comes out of the machine. It's more mm. grown into each other. Yeah. But if you put duplicate stitch, the duplicate stitches, they will pop more. Yeah, they will pop more. It's like a 3D effect that is really, really, really nice. It's very nice for felting. Yeah, too. so we, we actually enjoy that a lot. And then, of course, we did our book, our 30 Slippers book, a few years after that. And in our 30 Slippers book, there is a few uh, designs as well that have duplicate stitching on them. I believe there is... Um, among others, a bunny rabbit, I think, that is duplicate stitched on top. Mm. Uh, and again, you do the cross stitch, uh, sorry, no, the duplicate stitch, and then you felt the slippers in the machine and you get that really nice effect, which is lovely. Mm. So it's highly recommendable and a lot of fun. This girl is not going to be felted. No. She's just going to get her makeup on so that she can go out to that party. We've got she her party outfit, and as you already saw, her gorgeous red hair, uh, and she's going to be looking great. So, Arne, uh, back to duplicate stitching. Do you have yes. any, any tips? Don't it pull too tight. Because if you pull the yarn too much, they disappear. Yeah, they more. disappear into the knitting, yeah. So, not that I'm doing it perfect right now, because it's really hard to talk and do things at the same time. But, but you're doing great. I try to make them more or less looking the same. If I'm not successful... I actually I really don't care that much, but <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not so picky. No, no. But I mean, it looks good, and I'm gonna grab this. To see if if it go, I'm if gonna it grab gets... the scissors. Sorry, I grabbed the scissors. I need to Sorry. do a little bit of cutting here. Uh, her hair. I just wanna. But if it gets a little bit too d deep into the 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 face, you just put the needle under and you pull it a little bit. Yeah. Now this was not enough yarn so I have to start over for the last stitches. Oh really? And I just pull the yarn through like this because this will stay anyway. Scissor! Sorry I had to borrow because I saw a few threads that were not nice and I just cut 
You could be a hairdresser, you know. I don't know. I've never. You're so good with hair. Well, yeah, I used to play with my sister's Barbie dolls when I was a kid, and I used to cut all their hair off. Yeah, and now you play with these dolls. These knitted dolls, yeah, and make their hair. Well, you do that too, though. I do, but it's very nice when you do wigs like we done for this doll, because then you can cut it and you can do whatever you want yeah. because you're not destroying the doll no you're just destroying the wig and then you can make another wig yeah and of course uh we'll, we'll talk about the wig later on i'll show you what we've done and how we've done it and then you guys tell us i don't know you've got the book uh you've knitted all your dolls and now suddenly we come up with this idea hey why don't we do why don't we do wigs for the dolls? And then, of course, people are going to be like, oh, I want to have the pattern. And so what we need to know is, do you really want the pattern? Should we do a <laughs> tutorial? Should we show you how we do the wig? Is that something relevant? Are you still knitting the dolls from our book? Uh, all of these questions need to be answered by you guys. We don't know. I mean, we sit here in our, in our little corner of the world and we have really no idea of what is going on with our books. You know, I had this idea. I should buy one of these old these Japanese dolls, this... Blythe. Blythe. I don't know if they're Japanese, but they're very popular in Japan. I think it's actually an American They're popular doll. in America too, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. They're popular everywhere, maybe. And make clothes for the Blythe doll. But then I was thinking, hmm, why? Because we have the knitted doll. I can make clothes for this doll. Yeah. Although the yeah. Blythe dolls are quite fascinating. Now I've done the whites, and now I'm going to give her the dark blue. The eyeballs. As the eyeball. I think she, she looks good in dark blue. With blue yeah and i mean that will that matches perfectly to her hair yeah her red hair or her wig that she has today so yeah blythe the doll it's one of these really cute looking dolls uh, with a huge head and a tiny body a huge personality yeah and uh, if you've never heard of her uh, look her up just google blythe doll and blythe is spelled b-l-y-t-h-e so blythe Google her and you'll see uh, the most beautiful doll ever. Very nice. Yeah, we really like to her. to hide one. this inside if I can get it in there. If I can't, I don't know. You have to uh, cut. Too big. I think I go from further so, back and no, yeah. not at all. No That's not. the best way. So you're going in through the back, pulling the back the over head and pull it through. This probably look hurtful. Ah, yeah. oh, someone's hurting my eye. I just leave that and cut it later. Yeah. And now we're doing the eyeballs uh, in blue. Uh, is she going to get eyelashes yeah. or not? Yes. And eyebrows? Uh, no. Because sometimes we do an eyebrow, sometimes we do a lash. I think I just do lashes on this one. Okay, so she'll get eyelashes but no eyebrows and then a nice red lip, I suppose. She doesn't have ears and she doesn't have, what do you call it? Eye... Bro, eyes. eyebrows. Eyebrows. Because I think she will have a hairstyle that covers covers up to the eyebrows. Of yeah. course, if we do another hairstyle, maybe we have to put on some eyebrows, yeah. eyebrows and ears later. Yeah, but you know the cool thing about the duplicate stitch is that it's easy to remove and then uh, you know change it. So you're doing the eyes and the eyeballs. Now, obviously, they can stay the way they are. Uh, you do the eyelashes if you want to and then if you decide you know that we're gonna make her another wig and Maybe she needs eyebrows instead of eyelashes. You can always cut the eyebrows off and then yeah. put I oh sorry You can cut the eyelashes off and then put eyebrows on her mm -hmm. um, And that's cool. And it's the same I mean if you're doing blue eyes and you realize that you want to change her hair color uh, And then you want to change her eye color. You could always do that as well Just cut off the the blue or you can knit another doll or knit another doll obviously. and then they can change Hairstyles. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's with true. each other because they've got you know You make wigs mm. for them instead of putting the hair directly on the in the in the in our knitted book Knitted doll book and in the our favorite book the dolls have um, Knitted eyes. Yeah But some people find that really hard so so in the book with the knit and crochet garden, we had these small dolls. We called them the hippies. Yeah. They had eyes like this. So we were thinking if you think it's hard to do knitted eyes, you can do eyes like this. Yeah. And when I do the duplicate stitch, you see, I, 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 I bring the yarn up like in the, in the bottom of a stitch. I go under the legs in the stitch above. Like this, mm -hmm. and then I put the needle down again in the bottom, yeah, and bring it up 
in the neighboring stitch. And so would the technique be the same if you were doing a duplicate stitch on a sweater? Yeah. Yeah, so it's always the same way. You go from the bottom of a stitch and you cover the two legs in the stitch with the color, with the extra yarn. And you go and you go under the legs on the stitch that is mm. above. Yeah, duplicating the knit that you have underneath. Yeah, and there's no rules when you like you don't have to work on, on, on a line. You can put your needle up in the stitch wherever it feels natural yeah. or where it's easy for the next stitch. Yeah. It's like that with a lot of things, really. I mean, there are really no rules as long as it looks good. I mean, the end result is what really counts. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as it looks good. Yeah. If, you, if it doesn't look good, you should consider the way you do it. Yeah. So she's getting eyes. And she's getting eyes. You know what they say about eyes? Uh, that's when you can look into the soul of people. And but she's coming alive. Exactly. And that's always the thing with these dolls. You know, you, you make their face or like their head and you knit the nose, but there's no eyes and, and there's no personality. But as soon as you start putting in the eyes, that is when you start that's, seeing the personality. Yeah. And uh, sometimes... I think that's funny with the dolls. I, I, yeah, I know. It's so incredible. But it's the same with people. I mean, you look into people's eyes and you can see their soul in a way. You can see if they're telling the truth. You can see if they're honest, honorable. Um, and all these emotions that y y your eyes, you know, they can't really lie. Mm. Um, and it's the same with the doll. They get this personality as soon as the eyes come up. I don't know why, but it's incredible. And it's a lot of fun because once you get the eyes on the doll, that's when you actually start getting that relationship with them as well. She's coming alive. She's coming alive. There. And uh, that's the... Those are the eyes. The eyes. Wow. They're like popping out a little bit, but when it's you do okay. duplicate stitch, that's how it works. But it's, yeah. it's easy. So then I just cut the yarn that pops out of our head. This will be invisible anyway. Yeah. So next step is gonna be... Be some eyelashes. Oh, Freya is in a bad mood. And then I use the thin sock yarn. What you call it? Four ply? Yeah, the four ply. Freya! Fry, fry! She hears some cars or something somewhere. Yeah, so I just went and closed the window because it's annoying me that she <laughs> is barking today. Uh, come on, Freya, come on. So okay. now I outline the the white with the black. It's nice to have this one, this tail, so I can cut it later. Yeah. And then I do this um, stitches uh, where I go. You see, I, I go do the length on the stitch, and then I bring the needle back, and I put the needle up again in the middle of the first stitch. I think this is called Attersting in Norwegian. Yes. I don't know the English. Well, we made, a, we made a few tutorials in embroidery. Oh, we remember? did already. So. And, uh, and yeah, so we should kind of know what it is in English, but uh, because English is not our first language, we always keep forgetting this. Uh, so this stitch in, um, in knitting, what was the name again? But you see how I do it anyway, you go back yeah, but, but we need the name right you need a name i'm gonna look for it while we while you keep doing the yeah. eyelashes um i'm on the computer now so i'll just go to the arn and carlos channel which oh. by the way feel free to subscribe <laughs> and you know feel free to click like on every single video there because they're all really really good if we might say so ourselves um yeah and i'm gonna be going to uh and you see now i go to the channel to look and i'll find the name for yeah. sure so now I'm, I make the black outline on the eye with these uh, stitches and then I will do the eyelashes and they will, if you look now, I come up close to where I ended the stitch and then when you do eyelashes you do, just do a few stitches pointing out like this and you come up again with a needle in between the outline and the white. Could it be a stamp stitch or split S stitch? Stamp stitch, maybe that's the right word. So we've got st uh, stamp stitch, split stitch. Split is when you go... Yeah, when you split the yarn. Yeah, you into, go yeah. into so the needle. So this is a stamp stitch. It could, it's not a chain stitch for sure. It's not a chain. It's not a satin stitch for sure. 
Could it be a lazy daisy? No. No, that's the flower. That's the flower. So it is a stem stitch. That's stem the one we're stitch. going for. Or it's you can learn the Norwegian word. word Attesting. Attesting. That's good. We've it's got because you're going backwards. Yeah. You're going up then. Yeah, and we got a lot of people already on YouTube that uh, have asked us, you know, in our Q and A's to teach them some Norwegian words in knitting and crochet. So that you know, we'll do a few in in um, embroidery as well, like Attesting. Attesting. Utter stink. Repeat after me. Utter stink. Utter stink. <laughs> She's getting nice black, really thick uh, but eyelashes. Not as big as if I use the Merino 120, then they will be very big. Yeah. So I do. And then she'd look like a drag queen. Yeah. We don't want the drag queen look for this look today. Well, you never know what happens. Yeah, but she's in a more pared down kind of look. She's. Uh, what you call it? Her everyday makeup. Her everyday makeup. Yeah. I think I stopped the lashes there. Yeah, I think that's cute. That's very cute. And then I go over to the other eye. So that's another cool thing that you do when you go. Now the hard part to will be to copy this one. It could be a little bit longer, but it's fine. And again, I will be out of yarn in a few minutes. Looking really cute. So to just go back like this. Very cute. I think I stopped this yarn now because I'm just out in the back. So time to change a little more. So one more. And I'm also doing the mouth with duplicate stitch on this one. See what how that looks. Normally I just do the same um, sting as a mouth. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. But this girl is going to have a... She's going to have a mouth with a sting. Oh, so the mouth is going to be the same. What you call it again? The English word is found. Stem stitch? Stem, stem stitch. So, yeah. And the mouth is going to... Is she going to get like a really nice red lip today? Red. Well. Yeah. It's going to be red. That's really great. Red lips. Red hot lips. lips. Hot lips. And that will complete the makeup tutorial or the <laughs> duplicate stitch tutorial when she gets the... <laughs> it's a makeup tutorial. <laughs> it's a makeup tutorial. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a knitted dolls makeup, makeup tutorial. tutorial. And it's done in duplicate stitch. And anyway, people, you can apply what we're well, doing to the doll. You can apply it to anything that you want to do a duplicate stitch. The principle is the same. But don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this on yourself. Yeah. Okay, so okay. the wig is actually looking ready. I'm going to put it here uh, on the side. Now I'll see if I can copy the other the eyelashes. That will be hard on camera. And I suppose that when we do, when you finish uh, doing the makeup or the face. I'm going to put uh, on a sweater. Well, um, I've got the sweater here. I, I have to finish it up a little bit as well. Uh, maybe you'll let me do the honors this time. Yeah. Uh, the wig I have to do it because I'm already holding it in the in the way that you can put on the. Yeah. So we'll just swap places, and I'll put the. You uh, put on the. The sweater and the. The wig. And the wig. And you know, I'm I'm gonna find some small uh, safety pins. For the wig. For the wig. Yeah, pin that. Because if down. She, if she's gonna, what you call it, throw her hair back and forth. Yeah, whip her hair back and forth. Whip her, her hair back and forth. She will lose the hair. Yeah. So some small... Um, some small safety, safety pins. Safety pins will be nice. How many? Six. Six safety pins? No, six eyelashes. Six eyelashes, yeah. I think two safety pins would be more than enough. Yeah. Actually, what we could do, because we've done that crochet netting, is if you were telling me yesterday you could put buttons up on her head. Yeah, but this is like, if the, if it's a doll for a kid. That's true, yeah. But I don't think you make a... a you could use buttons. No, you couldn't. Buttons. That would be dangerous. No, yeah, that's, that's also dangerous. Everything is dangerous. Yeah, but I don't think if you're doing this for a kid, I honestly don't think that you should be doing a wig. You know, like for a kid, you should actually attach the hair directly to the head. Uh, but, you know, if it's for an adult like us, then we could put buttons. But maybe you find a very smart way to f to place the wig. Wait we'll until you see it. the wig. Yeah, and we'll see if people want us to do the tutorial. Uh, and I then could we'll put, fi figure it out. Yeah, I could time. put black under the eyes also like this. But I think maybe not. She will maybe be a little bit 
No, too you know what? Hard. That, that's party makeup. That's and party makeup. This is not a part. And you well, know, it's a party girl. But. She's a party girl, but we are at lunch right now. You know, it's what is it? Twelve o'clock. Yep. So Here let's put right on. Now? So uh, you're not, you're not gonna go to a party at twelve in the no. afternoon. Let's make the hair. No, yeah, the mouth. I love that's her. I love her. Uh, I love her makeup already. Are you going to give her a full lip or is it going to be a, a, a smaller lip? It's a small but full. A small but full <laughs> lip. <laughs> and let's see. Let's start somewhere under the nose where the mouth normally are. Yeah. So uh, don't put it too close to the mouth. No, to the nose. Put it like under somewhere. So if you want the instructions for... Uh, the uh, duplicate stitch makeup on the doll. Uh, you find it in our book Knit and Crochet Garden, uh, which is available in a number of languages. Uh, in the US and in the UK it's called Knit and Crochet Garden. In German it's called uh, Garden Strick, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, in French it's called Oh, I don't something know. French. Yeah, Jardin. Jardin. Le Jardin or something. I don't remember the I don't remember the exact translation, but but anyway, it is available in a number of languages, and you'll see uh, a chart as well as written instructions. For this. Look at this mouth; it's so nice. It's like small hearts. Oh, but I think it is definitely a full lip you're giving her. There. It's a full lip. I've never done lips like this before, but okay. I'm a little bit tired of the other lip. Yeah. Because we've made a lot of dolls and. A a lot of the dolls, they are like on, on trips all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of dolls in in South Korea. Yeah, we haven't seen them for a while. A Two while, years. and we send a whole gang to Japan for an exhibition. Yeah, I was looking through the box, our boxes with stuff, and I found only, I think it was five dolls. Okay, out of a lot of dolls. But I, I think the nice thing with these dolls is that if you have a lot of leftover yarns, you can make a doll every now and then. Yeah. And they're cute. They're cute, they're fun to make, and uh, again, as long as, or as soon as you put the eyes in, that's when the magic starts happening. This is a very full lip. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. Jesus, she looks good. Yeah, she loves her red lips. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. Maybe I just cut, cut off this because the stitches look good now, so I just cut off this. She's so stylish, I have to say. I know. And I, wait until you see the sweater. Yeah, and the sweater is the sweater is actually done in um, in other you know in other techniques that we haven't really explored. What's so it called much. again? A relief? No. It's a it's, because it's not cable. It's not a cable. No, it's not a cable knitting. In it, it's a relief. It's you know pl kind of plain with knitting and purling and making a design um, I don't know maybe they call it lace as well but okay. this one is done in a thicker yarn so it doesn't look like lace at all it's really nice fun to make these sweaters because you can use them on your knitted dolls or you can put them on the Christmas tree yeah that's true yeah and uh, that, that's the second question we're gonna put uh, ask we're gonna do it later on when we put when we start dressing the doll and, and giving her you know her final touches uh, but yeah I was looking through the um, through the comments of uh, our latest videos uh, yesterday. And somebody was actually asking if people in Norway don't do cables. I think that the person asking that was actually just saying that uh, she's never seen us do, do any cable. And so she's wondering, do we do cables? Do people in Norway like doing mm -hmm. cables? You know, that's the, the really old way of knitting in, in Scandinavia. That's cable and all these uh, relief patterns. Um, yeah. Because the color work, I think that came later. Yes, I think so too. And now the Norwegian color work has influenced color work, or the Scandinavian color work has influenced color work all over the world. Yeah. So, and now it looks like her lip is done, and she's looking fabulous <laughs> with her beautiful fabulous. red, full lips. The gorgeous eyelashes are done. And now all we've so, got left are the finishing touches. So kiss the camera. Kiss the camera, darling. And now for once, we are <laughs> going to be changing seats. Yes. So you're going to see Arne's hands leaving. And I will be coming in. And I go and look for some safety pins. Some safety pins. For, 
for your wig. Well, I do the finishing touches. And, uh, yeah. So, put on a sweater and some, some wigs. Yeah, and we can't wait to see how this turns out. So, I'm in position now. And, uh, yeah, she's looking gorgeous. Uh, almost ready to go. Uh, we've got her sweater uh, that I'm showing you here. Uh, a beautiful little thing uh, done in a relief pattern. Uh, and that was one of the things that uh, we wanted to ask. Again, we did a, we did a sweater like this and we put it on, um, on Instagram. Uh, we did little sweaters and tiny hangers and we hung them up on the Christmas tree. And a lot of people really love them. And so uh, our question is, should we do a podcast where we knit this sweater from beginning to end? Because we could do that. And would you like the pattern? So please uh, let us know in the comment field. We really want to hear from you. We really want to know uh, what you think about it. Um, and as you know, the head of the doll is uh, very big. So we need to dress her from below. So everything needs to come from the right place. And we're going to put her arm through. She looks good with the new face. She's looking gorgeous. So you go from I one. I more dolls now. And more sweaters. And we'll be putting... Yeah, and I already asked people if they want to see a tutorial while you were away looking for safety pins. She looks so good. She does, doesn't she? And and here's some safety here's pins. Here's the second. Uh, and here you go. He's oh, got she looks so good. A great, uh, a great sweater uh, that matches her tights perfectly. It's a little bit uh, short on the sleeve because I made it actually for the mouse. Yeah, but, but it's like a three-quarter three quarter sleeve, Arne. Yeah. That's yeah. not a bad thing and to have. And here's your safety pin, yeah. the hair pin. So, the, the final touch to make her gorgeous is the wig that we've got here. And uh, I'm sure you're curious, how did we make the wig? Well, I'll show you uh, underneath. We've crocheted kind of like a cap. It's a crocheted cap, as you can see. And then we have just um, put the, the hair through, the, through the, the, the holes in the crochet net that is the cap. And it's done the same way as we do it on the dolls in the doll book and in the garden book. Uh, except here we've done it on a cap. So, let's see, honey. <laughs> this goes here. And it goes there. I think that looks really great. Then I think Freya is already being naughty again. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll go here. She in. has to be careful. If not, we put the wig on her. If not, we'll put a wig on Freya. Yeah, poor girl. So I think we'll put just two safety pins should be enough. Put them through the uh, through the uh, uh, or net. Could, or you could put them under so they're not visible. No, but it's going to be covered by the hair, isn't it? That's not going to be seen. <laughs> So that's number one. Sorry. I have to put the face through the camera so people can see how beautiful Sorry, yeah. she looks. Well, yeah, we're going to show her in, you know, in the end. You're going to get to see the whole thing. And I'll put number two through here. And again, you won't see these because they'll be covered by all the hair. Uh, and again, the idea of putting buttons in her head and then uh, attaching the cap to the buttons. I think that's a really good idea. So, uh, let's see now. Yeah. Oh, she looks good. She's looking spectacular. There you go. You've got that lovely wig that, oh, sorry. You've got that lovely wig. Uh, it's all done. <laughs> Just have to comb it in a little bit. Um, and then we'll just lie her down so that you can see what she looks like. So this is the finished doll. Nice. She's looking amazing. And Ready to go for her lunching yeah, appointment. Yeah, we can with do a friends. lot of hairdos for her. Nice. Yeah, and remember, remember that we do uh, videos every single week. Uh, we do all kinds of videos now. We've got tutorials, we've got Q&As, we've got everybody's favorite podcast where they can sit together with us and they can knit while we talk about, you know, different kinds of things. Today we've done a hybrid. It's something between a tutorial and a podcast. Uh, so maybe some people have been paying more attention and knitting less today. But in any case, we hope that you've enjoyed it. If you enjoy uh, our videos, we would appreciate it if you click on the like button. Anything you want to ask us, please put it on the comment line. Um, 
And again, we're looking for tips for tutorials, right, Arda? Yes. So yeah. anything, anything you feel that we haven't done uh, that you would like to see, please let us know. Yes. Uh, comment as much as you like. Click on the like. And if you're not subscribing, please don't forget to subscribe to the Arden and Carlos channel, uh, where we hope to inspire you every week. So with that said, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, looking forward to uh, next week with you. I'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so cute. <laughs>